Today I will tell you about DOM, Shadow DOM, Virtual DOM and differences between them. But before we will start, remember to subscribe our channel with the red button down there and to turn on the notifications and give us thumbs up and leave a comment during the video. Also visit us on our social media. Let's start! everyone. As I mentioned a few seconds before, today we are going to talk about DOM, Virtual DOM and Shadow DOM. A lot of beginners confuse the DOM concept and they don't know what's actually about. Many people think that DOM is the HTML or XML they are created, but it's not exactly that. And also with the normal DOM there are some issues with performance which are solved by solutions from modern front-end frameworks like Virtual DOM and Shadow DOM. And today I'm going to tell you about Normal DOM, Shadow DOM and Virtual DOM, what's the differences and what's the benefits and how they work. So let's start! Okay, so let's start from the explanation of what is actually DOM before we will go into Shadow DOM and Virtual DOM. So, beginners very often mislead DOM with what they create as an HTML structure or their website or application. But HTML becomes the DOM after the browser parses it. Then it becomes document object model. The definition says that DOM is an API for HTML or XML document and it creates a logical structure which can be accessed and manipulated. In other words, JavaScript can access and do changes in document object model. The reason to implement the document object model was to provide a standard programming interface, which could be used with any programming language in different environments. By DOM modification, we can understand adding, deleting, modifying elements of the website, assigning them different behavior like on click, on change, uh, or I don't know, covering the mouse, or different properties like background color, children, and stuff like that. Every browser has its global object called window. Inside the window, there are different properties and methods. One of the properties in the window object is a document where we may find a lot of properties and methods which can be used to access DOM elements to interact with them. But before we will go to see different kind of methods and properties, let's take a look at the screen when you can see the structure of document object model for a simple HTML. So, as I mentioned, it starts from the document object, then we have the HTML, which is like basic for every HTML document. Then we have head and body, so if you have ever created any basic website, then probably you had to add this. And then body can go into some different elements like title, meta tags and stuff like that. And also body might have some different elements inside it and each element can be parent of the other element, like you can see on the image. So, each of these objects represents an HTML element from the website as an object, with properties, attributes and methods which allow to modify it as I mentioned before. Here on the screen right now you can see the example of properties, attributes and methods so, for example, the element like normal, I don't know, diff element can have color, ID, class, background, can have some children as well, can have first child, last child. And probably if you have ever coding any HTML and CSS, you know something about that or used pure JavaScript. 
those elements might also have methods which we can use to modify it so we can use methods like has attribute or matches or add event listener or scroll into view or to string or many many more which you can find in the internet easily now let's discuss about shadow dom what is it and why it's good shadow dom is a tool used to build component based apps and websites Shadow DOM comes in small pieces and it doesn't represent the whole document object model. We can see it as a subtree or as a separate DOM for an element. Shadow DOM can be imagined like bricks from which the DOM is created. The main difference between DOM and Shadow DOM is how it's created and how it behaves. Normally, DOM nodes which we create are placed inside each element like in the tree we saw before. In the case of Shadow DOM, we create a scope tree, which is connected to the element, but separated from the child elements. It's called Shadow Tree and the element it's attached to is called Shadow Host. And here we come to a great advantage of a Shadow DOM. Everything which we will add to Shadow DOM is local, even styles. Right now on the screen you can see the graphic represents the shadow dome and how it works. So you can see the normal dome on the left and one element of our normal dome is shadow host which I mentioned before. This shadow host is like a copied part of the dome which creates a separate dome with shadow root and some elements. Right now, let me tell you about some advantages of the Shadow DOM and why we say it's so useful and also what kind of issues it solves. First of all, it isolates the DOM. So the DOM of the component is a separate element which won't appear in a global DOM. Another issue it helps with is scoping of the CSS, which means styles created inside a single Shadow DOM element are isolated and stay in the scope of the shadow dome. It simplifies styling a lot and we don't have to worry about naming space and we can use simple selectors and class names. Also, we can think of the application as it is built from chunks. It is based on components actually, so yeah, we can. And we don't have to imagine it as a massive one object. Now let's talk about the performance of the shadow dome. As you probably already know, there are some issues with performance when we are manipulating the DOM because every change will make a re-rendering of the whole object when we are using a traditional DOM object. In the case of Shadow DOM, browser knows which part should be updated because of the shadow host and shadow root. Great, we went through Shadow DOM, so now we can go to understand the virtual DOM to find out what is it, as this one is a little bit more popular, I think. So let's jump into virtual DOM and let's find out what's that and how it works. So virtual DOM is a concept of DOM used by React.js and Vue.js. And in virtual DOM concept, copy of the DOM is saved in the memory. And while any changes is done in the DOM, it's compared to find the differences. Then, browser knows which elements are changed and can update only those parts of the application to avoid re-rendering of all the DOM element. And it's mostly done to improve the performance of the UI libraries. Uh, as we know from the uh, previous DOM description, every element is re-rendered in normal DOM, no matter if we change just small element or if we change the whole page. But in virtual DOM, it's different. So right now, take a look at the image on the screen and let's understand step by step how it works in virtual DOM. The first step is when the change is done. The change is done to the virtual DOM, not to the original DOM. So the copy of the original DOM. Then there is a process of diffing. So the browser checks What's the difference between virtual DOM and real DOM? While the differences are found, then browser, which knows which elements in the original DOM should be updated, updates that element and 
That's it. In the virtual DOM concept, it's possible to apply more than one change at once to avoid re-rendering of every single element changed. So, from this we can understand that the biggest issue that virtual DOM solves is the performance improvement on the DOM manipulation. And finally, we can jump into the differences between Shadow DOM and Virtual DOM. The only thing that both of these DOMs have in common is that they solve performance issues. Both create a separate instance of the document object model, besides that, both concepts are different. Virtual DOM is creating a copy of the whole DOM object, and the Shadow DOM creates small pieces of the DOM object which has their own isolated scope of the element they represent. Summarizing, DOM concept is very important in front-end programming and everybody needs to understand how it works. Nowadays, almost every modern front-end framework comes with some improvement for the modification of the DOM object to improve the performance. There is Shadow DOM and there is Virtual DOM which helps us to create a faster and better performing applications for better user experience. I hope it helped you understand what's the difference between both and how they work. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. I hope during this video you were able to understand what's the difference between the traditional DOM, virtual DOM and shadow DOM. You know when you can find all those types and how important and useful are the improvements from React, Vue or Angular. I hope you like the video and you find it useful and don't forget about thumbs up, comments and subscribing to our channel if you don't do it yet because we have a lot, a lot great content for you. Also remember to visit our blog and our social media which links you will find in the description and where you can find a lot of great news, promos and other interesting stuff. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!